Today we are going to look at some examples of how the Western genre has been heavily influenced by classical art, and more specifically, why when searching for inspiration on your next period piece, like a Western, often art can be the best source for inspiration. They whipping little Jody? Point me in that direction. Like in the movie Django Unchained by Quentin Tarantino. This is one of my favorite action scenes. The costume itself comes from the Thomas Gainsborough painting, The Blue Boy. We can even find examples where an entire scene comes from a painting. Like in this one from the Alamo. Look at the set, the lighting, the camera angle. Even the character's body language comes from the painting by John Singer Sargent. Look how the flamenco dancer's arm twists in the very same angle that we see in the movie. Although not a Western, the movie Heat could easily be a Western. And this depiction of the painting Pacific by Alex Colville is a great example of how composition can be taken directly from art. Another great example of where we can see art's influence is in psychological thrillers and horror, specifically in the Western genre or any time period piece. This is a dream sequence in the movie The Revenant, and we see the main character walk towards the crumbling ruins of a Gothic Abbey. On the other side, his dead son walks towards him. Sadness and desolation fill the screen. Notice the skeletal trees that rise and surround the ruins. This scene comes from The Abbey in the Oakwood by Caspar David Friedrich. In this surreal scene from Mad Max, the image comes from the surrealist master, Salvador Dali. Only instead of elephants, we have some creature, and instead of a lot of red and orange, we have a lot of blue and black. A film can take an actor's body language from art, like in this scene from There Will Be Blood. The drama and the surrender of the pose is quite powerful and identical to the painting scene here. Using art as inspiration is not a new concept to filmmaking. Filmmakers have always been influenced by art, even going back to the turn of the century. Alfred Hitchcock took a house from the movie Psycho directly from a Hopper painting. One great example is from the movie Gone with the Wind, where we can see the final scene comes directly from a Caspar David Friedrich painting, Women Before the Rising Sun. Other filmmakers like John Ford was able to take the formula and emotion from a piece of art, but twisted slightly to fit his movie's theme. He did this in Young Mr. Lincoln, in this clip here, where he took directly from a familiar patriotic artwork, The Spirit of 76. The famous printing company, Courier and Ives, had a dramatic print titled Midnight Race in the Mississippi. Ford takes this image and uses it in his climax in the film Steamboat Around the Bend. Not only did Ford recreate the general composition of the print, he even cut to the close shot to show the flame mix with the smoke. Another one of Ford's films, She Wore a Yellow Ribbon, is set in Fort Stark, a cavalry post in the Southwest. In all of the details in the film, the fort resembles the watercolor of Alfred Jacob Miller's Fort Laramie. John Ford constantly used art to influence his films. In another Ford film, Fort Apache, John Wayne's character, Captain York, discusses a fictional painting called Thursday's Charge with a group of newspaper men. Of course, you're familiar with the famous painting of Thursday's Charge, sir. Yes, I saw it when last in Washington. That was a magnificent work. There were these massed columns of Apaches in their war paint and feather bonnets. And here was Thursday leading his men in that heroic charge. Correct in every detail. Although John Wayne's character knows the charge was reckless and ill-conceived, he maintains the bravado of the colonel. Ford must have been referencing one of the many paintings of Custer's Last Stand. A great example can be seen in Harold von Schmidt's Massacre, because the movie Fort Apache seems to recreate the painting shown here. He could also be referencing Custer's Last Fight by Casey Adams. In the same manner of the film, Adams' painting of Custer's Last Fight makes Custer's Last Stand to be heroic, with little attempt at historical accuracy. Without a doubt, 
Ford's most influential painter was Frederick Remington. His pictures provided Ford with not only color and movement, as Ford put it, but specific gestures. For example, in She Wore a Yellow Ribbon, a cavalry officer played by John Wayne writes an order to a subordinate. I gave you a written order, Flint. Would you obey it? I don't need a written order from you. Nevertheless, you're gonna get it. He supports the scrap of paper he uses on the trooper's back. This gesture recreates the way Remington depicted himself in a drawing titled Method of Sketching at San Carlos. Ford was not the only person to take from Remington. In a more modern Western, Stephen Weisler was also heavily influenced by the great painter in the TV show Godless. What, what, um, were you inspired by any Westerns? Have to be studied? honest with you, before I actually looked at Westerns, I, I actually got my, most of my research, or beginning of my, my research, from actually old Western photographers and painters, like uh, a painter, Frederick Remington. Uh, I got a lot of the, the, the colors and, 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 and color palette. Remington is known for his dramatic paintings of Western cowboys and running horses, as well as his masterful night scenes. He was able to paint the glow of the campfire reflecting on his characters. In this example, we can see the spellbinding glow of the campfire scene. And notice how in this scene from Godless, we have the same composition that we see in this Remington painting, called On Guard. Remington's work demonstrates two devices, diagonal composition and repetition. The use of repetition in paintings creates the impression of large number of figures with only a few and can give the viewer a lot of information about one figure in a short time. Remington repeated gestures, postures, figures, and groups, whether it be cavalrymen, cowboys, or Native Americans. We can see some examples in the TV show Godless, where we get a view of Frank's group of outlaws. Notice how they are all similarly dressed, and even though there are 30, we feel like there's a massive game by the use of repetition. Diagonal lines convey a feeling of movement. Objects in a diagonal position are unstable because they are neither vertical nor horizontal. Artists use diagonal lines to create movement and a sense of energy. In this painting, Remington uses diagonal lines to convey a feeling of movement and energy. Diagonal lines create tension, and they can even exaggerate a sense of distance, often tracking from foreground to background. There are countless examples in Westerns where we see the use of diagonal lines. Sometimes as a filmmaker, our go-to place for inspiration research is other films in the same genre or other filmmakers. And perhaps this is a mistake. And we should instead look towards classical paintings, photography, sculpture, and other forms of art to inspire our next project. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.